everyone. Thank you for watching me here on IC Melanie. And today we're talking once again about The Bear, Season 3, Episode 5, called Children. So this episode takes place in the morning and afternoon before the service starts. So we see a bit of clips of people just, you know, going about their lives. We see Sugar is at a church thinking most likely about her child and her mother and the fact that she hasn't told her mom that she's pregnant yet. Also, we see Carmi and Marcus. They are at his house and movers are there taking away some of the stuff that belonged to his mother. So he's figuring out what he's going to do with the house, with the things, with everything, with his life. A lot of stuff is going on. And he apologizes for that weird interaction that he and Sid had. I think it was season one. It was a very long time ago where he asked her out and she awkwardly said no without saying no. And it made things weird between them. And then Marcus kind of lashed out at her very unprofessionally. Even though it has been a long time since that incident occurred, I'm glad that he clarified things and apologized for his actions. And they talked about being in the dead mom's club. So a little macabre humor, you know, goes a long way. We get to Carmi and he wakes up to the news that the restaurant run by Olivia Coleman's character is being shut down. She's decided to end things with the restaurant in the next couple of weeks or so. So this really kind of takes the wind out of Carmi's sail because this is a restaurant he worked at when he revered very highly that he thought was going to be around forever. But as Sugar points out later, you know, that doesn't always happen. It doesn't happen. Things change. And so... He's dealing with that. And of course, this is just one more thing to make Carmi that much more emotional in one way or the other. And so we see him, he's at the kitchen, he's testing things out, he's asking Sydney for her opinion. And of course, he's Carmiing, right? He is being a perfectionist and, you know, he's doing what he does. And so we see Tina arrives and she comes in with less produce, less vegetables than they expected because she mentions the farmer's market isn't as stocked as it used to be. And this brings up um, a point that Sid, I think she mentioned beforehand about how they need to get vendors. They can't rely on the farmer's market because you think of when you go to a farmer's market or even when you go to a grocery store, one day you might go in and there might be tons of pink lady apples and then the next day, there's none or they're all bruised. That's my situation at my grocery store. I haven't bought a Pink Lady Apple in months because everyone I go to is dented up in some way, right? So um, as annoying as it is for me as a consumer, if you're a restaurant, you need the reliability factor that much more. And I know Carmi is changing the recipes every single day, the menu every single day, but still you need some degree of continuity and reliability. And a farmer's market might have more artisanal, more locally grown things, which is great. But when you're running a restaurant, you need to have those staples. You need to have your garlic, you need to have your onions, you need to have all these things on, at a consistent level because you are serving several people and you just need to know this is going to be here. And so speaking of that, Cicero, the uncle comes in with the computer. So we meet the computer in person and he has no name just computer and he's telling them that you know this line item needs to be reduced how come we're going through so many different things how come they're black napkins you know he's going through all these different things from a very methodical and logical point of view but again this is not really Carmi's <laughs> approach to things and he's mentioning that again r d is taking up a lot of financial resources because they're changing the menu every single day Carmi is kind of copying an attitude with computer and his uncle. He says something in a rude way that the uncle doesn't like. So he pulls him aside and says, you know, never talk to me like that ever again. And he, the uncle is completely right. Carmi is really not in the position to be telling this man who's bankrolling this entire thing to like basically shut up about my costs. Your costs, Carmi, those are your uncle's costs, really. So part of me feels as though this story um, from a writing perspective, is a little contrived because, again, I mentioned in other videos from previous episodes that these are things that you would think were hashed out beforehand. Again, I've never worked in the restaurant business, never run a restaurant or a business like this, but this seems very rud rudimentary to me. And the fact that after two months, three months, however long they've been running, these kind of things haven't been hammered out yet. It seems like a major failing on all their parts, on Carmi's part, Sid's part, the uncle's part, 
and sugar's part as well. So yeah, I don't know. I feel as though they're kind of circling around this. this the writers are circling around the same storylines um, just for the sake of story. So it's kind of a knock of, against the writing. I, I'm feeling this season. Round and round and round we go. One more thing. With the computer, I have the feeling that once Sugar goes on her mat leave, that he is going to let go of Marcus. As he mentions, like, do we need a pastry chef? He makes two things. Could we let him go? Which I can understand from his, you know, logic and sense perspective that that makes sense. Um, I think that they yeah, maybe they could utilize Marcus a bit better. Um, but if they don't utilize Marcus in a good way, that would be a failing on Sugar, Sid, Carmi's point or end. So I hope for Marcus's sake that he doesn't get let go, but I don't think it's looking too good. We learned that the Chicago Tribune, I believe, a newspaper is coming in to take pictures of the restaurant because they've already done a review. And so we see Richie there is courting everything. So he is rearranging the flowers. He has gotten the Fack brothers to clean up, do some scrubbing or buffing of the floors. And so we get back into the facts. And as I mentioned in a previous video, the Fack brothers, I find them to be so obnoxious. I'm sorry, I do not find them funny. These are grown, late 30s, 40 year old people. They're brothers, yes, I have sisters and we act like children sometimes, <laughs> but not like that. It's just at a level that just does not seem believable. And also the cousin, John Cena, oh my gosh, that was, a horrible cameo by far the worst cameo i've seen on this show it's just very silly you know they're talking about stealing sd cards like okay like this is so dumb and you know john cena's up in their faces talking about haunting them and how one of the facts doesn't like being put in boxes it's like is this are you guys really talking about this so i will stop talking about the facts because i don't want to sound like i'm being negative but i really can't stand their dynamic but I'll say this, as bumbling as I think they are, I really did expect for one of them to accidentally, you know, knock over a table or knock over a floral arrangement when they were buffing the floors, but they didn't. So that was good. But I will, I will say this one thing. How could you smoke cigarettes in a restaurant when you're cleaning up, cleaning it up and you know that um, the newspaper is coming in later on to take pictures? Like, why would you do that? And I don't know what it's like in Chicago. I'm sure it's the same way it's like in Toronto or, you know, the, the Ontario area. We haven't had smoking in restaurants in well over 15 years. Um, thinking back to, oh, probably 20 years now. I can't remember, but it's been a very long time since we've had smoking inside clubs or restaurants or bars. And I'm pretty sure Chicago's the same way. So I don't know. I find it very... Not right to be smoking in a restaurant, even though it's way in the morning and nobody's there. Like, come on. Okay, enough fact slander for me for today. <laughs> and kind of offside, Richie is still doing that silly thing where he's asking Sid to relay a message to Carmi when he and Carmi are right in the same room. Carmi is in earshot. He can hear everything. But he's continuing on on this silly back and forth dynamic that they have that again is very unbecoming of a 40 something year old man the photographer mentions uh, a dish with duck and carmy of course he can't remember what he did because he's been doing so many different things but also that shows us like he and sid and everybody else but it's really his i'd say it's his responsibility because it's his idea to do this rotating menu he hasn't been documenting the dishes he's been making so it's hard to replicate something if you don't know exactly what you did. So again, this shows the disorganization within them. At a point, we see Sid talking to Cicero, to the uncle, and he's asking, you know, when are you going to press that DocuSign? Are you excited about this endeavor? And she says, yeah, I'm excited. And he says, you don't really sound excited. And then he kind of laments with her and goes back to, you know, Carmi. Carmi being so grouchy that day, like what in particular has gotten to him? And Sid's kind of like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to answer that question. Carmi is just being Carmi. But then he mentions that, you know, he feels so maybe he failed as an uncle. He wasn't really there for them when they were younger for all three of the kids. And maybe if he had more of an input, 
they could have turned out differently. And, you know, perhaps Mikey could still be alive today. It's one of those things where you'll never really know. He cares. He really does care. As much as he's being like a hard ass, I don't think he's actually being that hard on him, to be quite frank. But he cares about their outcomes. And he needs Carmi to do better, which I completely co-sign on. Overall, I thought the episode was okay. It wasn't my favorite. It was kind of slower. And I'm totally about slower episodes and seasons. I know that always happens. That happens in life. But I do feel as though the writing is kind of meandering a bit. We're kind of rehashing things that we've very well established already this season. So I'm looking forward to things moving on and people learning from the mistakes or lessons they learned, <laughs> they experience in other episodes. So episode six is next. I'll be back here to review that one. So make sure you subscribe to IC Melanie so you don't miss out any of the new videos I put out, okay? I'll see you guys later and bye.